This is Mars, and it's the first planet we think of when we talk about colonizing another planet. It's close enough to be realistic, it's roughly the same size, and there's frozen water. But despite all that, Mars is just an overglorified ball of dirt. And I'm not saying that because I hate Mars, I mean what psycho would hate a planet? I'm saying that because it's the truth. If we ever sent people up there for an extended period of time, they simply wouldn't be able to sustain themselves. According to NASA, a planet needs at least the following three things to sustain life. First, liquid water. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. The second one is energy. This could be in the form of sunlight, which Mars has just enough of because it's in the Goldilocks zone. This is the zone in a solar system that's habitable because the planets are close enough to the sun that not everything is frozen, but not too close, so it's not literal hell either. And the third thing needed are nutrients, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and some others. Mars has these, but it fails to meet the first requirement. There is no liquid water. Because we can clearly see the dried up riverbeds in photos that were taken during Mars missions, we know that a long long time ago it had liquid water on its surface. Now you might say, but there's frozen water which can be melted and problem solved. That's true, but without a water cycle where water evaporates, then forms clouds and then comes back down again in the form of rain or snow, the frozen water is not really all that useful, because eventually there will be no more ice to melt. Also, if we're not talking about random life that might potentially develop, and instead we as humans want to populate Mars, we need some additional things to be able to live there. One major factor would be a stronger atmosphere. The Martian atmosphere is much thinner than ours, it's only about 10% of the atmosphere here on Earth. This means the exposure to radiation from space is much higher than on Earth and we would need to find a way to counteract that. Then there is the weather. Because the atmosphere is so thin, it can't retain heat. The temperature changes very quickly and can range from minus 195 degrees Celsius during winter to about 20 degrees Celsius in summer. Even if we could somehow thicken the atmosphere, our problems wouldn't be solved. We'd still have to somehow deal with the lack of oxygen. This is where terraforming comes into play. We could modify Mars so it becomes suitable for human life, right? There are so many different ideas floating around that I can't cover all of them, but let's look at the three most popular ones and see why they won't work unless we have big technological advancements and much more research. One suggestion that many of you might have heard already is to nuke Mars. This idea has been proposed by scientists for a while, but it gained mainstream attention due to a crazy billionaire named Elon Musk. But what exactly would nuking do? The idea behind it is to heat the ice from the polar regions up so it turns into water vapor that forms clouds. At the same time, carbon dioxide that's locked in the water ice would get released and further help to thicken the atmosphere. This would create a more stable climate, even if the atmosphere still wouldn't be as thick as here on Earth. The problem with that is we don't have enough nuclear weapons and we don't really know how it would turn out in the end. What if Mars becomes a nuclear wasteland because of all the radioactive materials? That would even be a setback in our journey to colonize Mars. Another way to heat up the planet is to use mirrors, but we need big ones and a lot of them, which means it's going to be very expensive. At least we wouldn't turn Mars into an even more barren wasteland than it already is, but we still have no idea if this even works. If we can't create a more solid atmosphere, the planet would cool down very quickly and all our efforts would be for nothing. The second suggestion is to use greenhouse gas injection. By releasing carbon dioxide, methane or ammonia into the atmosphere, we could make it thicker. But how exactly are we going to do that? We could build factories that produce one of these gases, either on Mars itself or somewhere in its orbit. Or we could use biological organisms by genetically engineering them to produce the needed gas. But we'd have to carefully monitor the impact on the Martian environment while doing that. Another popular suggestion is to genetically engineer plants so they thrive on Mars and produce oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. This way we could slowly make the air more breathable for humans. However, we have a hard time predicting the outcome of any of these plans. We don't have the money or the resources to do so either, unless another crazy billionaire comes along and decides to give it a go. Even if we could follow through with one of these ideas and it magically works at first try, we still couldn't just hop on a spaceship and simply live there. Since Mars doesn't have an electromagnetic field like the Earth, we'd have to find a way to artificially create one, because without it, Mars's atmosphere will thin down again over time. And there is still one problem left, gravity. 
Since Mars is smaller than Earth, its gravitational pull is weaker and this would have impacts on our health. We have seen astronauts that were in microgravity lose muscle mass and bone density. But there are other changes that are even more dramatic. Our heart has to work against gravity to pump blood into our upper body. What if it doesn't have to work that hard anymore? Well, the problem is, we can't really tell. This could lead to changes in blood volume, circulation and heart structure. It could also lead to changes in our reproductive health. We have sent animals into space so they experience weightlessness and observe changes in their hormone levels, sperm mobility and fertility. While Mars's gravity is not so low that we'd be weightless, we still need to do some more research before we send people to Mars and hope for the best. As you can see, there are many unknowns and a lot of challenges when it comes to colonizing Mars. Unless we have a huge technological advancement or scientific breakthrough, our red neighbor will be alone for at least some more centuries or potentially even forever. To prevent muscle atrophy, you should like this video and write your thoughts in the comments. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and here are some other videos you might also enjoy.